Hey Andy here from Andy's Tech Tutorials. Now in this video I am going to show you some of the quick action tools available within Adobe Creative Cloud Express. These are brand new tools to the platform so since the upgrade from Adobe Spark to Adobe Creative Cloud Express you now have access to these extra tools and they are incredibly useful. I am working on a free account, so I'm not working on my premium account in this video. So everything that I'm going to show you, you are able to do on a standard free Creative Cloud Express account. There are a couple of these tools which are premium only and they're marked with the little crown icon and I'll highlight those as I go through. But in this video tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to use some of these tools that can make your life much, much easier, especially when it comes to sharing content for social media. Now, if you aren't familiar with Adobe Creative Cloud Express, I do have a video which gives you a quick overview as to what it is. I'll pop the link to that in the description and I'll also put it in the card above just now. Okay, so I've already logged into Adobe Creative Cloud Express just now. And you'll see when you're in the standard home area here, you have these quick actions listed around about the middle of the page. If you click on the plus button on the top left, then you'll also see we have quick actions here. So there are in total over 10 different tools that you can make use of as quick actions. So you can have image, video or PDF quick actions. We're not going to cover all of these today because in this video it would take a long, long time if we're going through them all. But I'm going to highlight some of the ones I think are particularly useful um, and I think would appeal to, to most of you watching this video. So you can launch any of these from this plus button or you can try their recommended ones or you see you can sort by um, image, video or PDF. So for example here when I highlight PDF you'll notice that they have the little crown icon which means that these are premium only so if you don't have a premium account you're not able to use these but obviously if you do have a premium account then you can. I'm going to start going into the image tool. So you'll see here there are four different image tools. So we've got resize image, remove background, convert to JPEG and convert to PNG. They're all pretty self-explanatory. You can tell straight away just looking at them by the names exactly what these tools do. But they make life so much easier because if you have content such as an image which you're looking to resize for a specific website and you maybe don't have tools on your computer or knowledge on how to resize, you can use the tools in here. So let's kick things off with the resize image tool. So I'm going to click on resize image. And then what it essentially does is it asks me to either browse my device or drop my own image into this box that we see here. As well as that, if you don't, for example, have an image to go in here, then you can use their sample image just to see how the tool works. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to take a, an image from my other screen, I'm going to drag it across and drop it in here. So this is a New York City image which is 1920 by 1080. So it's a landscape image as you see here. Now one of the things I might want to do here is a, I may want to choose a specific size for um, my website or I might want to be maybe putting this onto the likes of Instagram. And rather than using the tool with an Instagram to sort of resize, I can actually resize it here so that when I put it into Instagram, it will fit perfectly and it will show what I want it to show by default. So you'll see here, first of all, you have resize for and you can choose in here what you are resizing for. So if you are resizing for Facebook, for example, then you'll see much like in the design tool, you get the artboard size for Facebook. So I wouldn't have known that it's 1200 by 628, but by going into here, I can basically choose post and you'll see it now basically resizes my image. So it's no longer 1920 by 1080, it's now 1200 by 628. When the hand comes up, you can move around. So of course, because this one has been um, zoomed into slightly, we can move up and down to pull in a little bit more of the picture, but you can still scale in using image scale so if I wanted to zoom in even further, we could zoom in. So now I know when I click download, this image is going to be correctly sized for Facebook. If I'm not interested in that, I might want to choose Instagram. And then you'll see, for example, an Instagram story, which is portrait, it will then fit in here. But it tells you here your image is too small for the selected size. It may be pixelated, and that's because I have scaled it in. So if I scale it back out, we'll now see that the image fits nicely. So I might want to just zoom a little bit 
and then pop it in. And when I'm happy with that one, when I click download, that image is going to be suitable for an Instagram story. So you can see just how useful this tool is. And then the final one I'll show you is if I go to custom, then we've got 1080 by 1920 in here. Now you'll see it's actually switched the width and the height because we had set it up here initially um, or a second ago for Instagram. So if I go back to standard, then widescreen, um, and then zoom back out. Now if I go into custom, it should have the correct dimension. So it's now wider than it is higher, which is what it was originally. So just be mindful that it seems to retain the last artboard that you chose when you go into custom. So now in custom, I might want to make it 1200 and then you'll see it automatically alters the height to keep the ratio correct. You can obviously unlink or unlock the aspect ratio and then if you were to change this one, for example, it would keep the height the same. But I'm always against doing that because you want to keep everything in proportion and sometimes it can skew it a little bit. So if I've got my image here, I've now made it 1200 by um, 675, I might want to scale it in just slightly and then all I do is I click on download and you will see the JPEG has been downloaded, which I can um, open up and make use of. So we have basically edited the size of that image. So a really, really handy tool there. Now you'll see it once it's been downloaded, you can actually click on start creating and you can create a new design from this particular image. But in this case, I'm not really interested in doing that at the moment. I'm happy just to close this down. So your image doesn't get saved into your projects area like it would if you clicked, clicked create and start to work on the image in the design tool, but it will be saved to your computer, usually to your downloads folder. So that's a little bit about the resize image tool, which is incredibly useful. I'm not gonna cover the remove background tool because I have another video showing that on the previous version of Adobe Spark, but it actually works exactly the same. So I'll put a link in the card above to that one if you want to see that. The final one to show you is um, convert to JPEG. So it might be that you have a PNG file or you might have a JPEG and you want to convert to a PNG or to a JPEG from a PNG. So if you've got, um, let's say for example, artwork for your website and you need it to be in a JPEG format, then you can convert. Now obviously there's different reasons why you might want to use a PNG file. It could be that you've got transparent background. It could be that it's a logo, stuff like that. But in this example, I'm just going to show you how to convert a file to a JPEG. So I'll click on convert to JPEG. And then all you do is like before, you either drag your file in or you use the browser device to find it. So I'm going to select on my other screen a logo, which is a PNG file. This is a transparent Tim Hortons logo. So essentially in this logo, anything that you're seeing here in white is actually not white, it's transparent. But what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a JPEG, which will then turn that transparent area white and it will no longer be transparent. So all I need to do now is um, click download and then you'll see down here we now have a JPEG. So that PNG file, which was transparent, is now a JPEG with a solid white background. Again, just shows you how quickly and easily you can use these tools to perform the action that you're looking for. So those are some of the image tools. As I said, there's a couple of extra ones in there, but I'm not going to cover them in this tutorial, but they're, they work in the same sort of way. Next, let's have a look at video. So within video, you'll see there are quite a lot of tools here. We've got a basic trim tool. We can resize. We can merge videos together. You can convert a video to a GIF. Um, you can crop videos, change the speed, convert to MP4 and reverse. So much like image, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to highlight some of the video tools that I think are probably the most um, useful to you. So the first one is the trim video. If you have received a video file and um, you want to just make some basic trim to it, then what you can do is you can use this tool and all you do is basically in the same way as before, you're just going to drag your video file across. So I've got a video here, which I'll drop in. This is just a standard MP4 of New York City. And basically you'll see here when I click play, that is just some cars driving around some of the streets and some people walking past. What I want to do though, is I want to trim it. So let's say for example, it's 13 seconds in length, but maybe I just want to trim it down to 10 seconds. So we can drop it down to 10 seconds there. There we go. 
so 10 seconds. And then what's really cool is you can then play it and just check if you're happy with it. Let's say for example I want to start here, then I just grab the start point and just drag that back. So you can see how quickly and easily you can edit a piece of, of media. So you're basically just trimming the first bit and trimming the end. What you can now do is you can go into where it says landscape and you can size it. So if I know that this is going to go onto Instagram, which is square, I could change it to square and then you'll see it pops in here like this. Now we've got these bars and that's because it's retained its widescreen aspect, but it's put it into square. So what you can do is you can click on fill screen and then you will see it has filled it and all you do is you just drag around until you have it positioned where you want it. You can also mute your video, so it will bring it in with the audio, of course, and whenever you download it, it will download it with the audio. But if you want to, you can mute that, so it's basically just a piece of video without the audio. Final thing just to mention is, you'll see up here where you've got the timestamps, you can actually change this, so I could set it to be exactly five seconds to exactly 10 seconds, or if I've maybe trimmed it a little bit too much, then I could drop it back to four. So you can basically pick and choose where you want the start and the end time to go. Then all you need to do is just click download. It will process your video and then just like before, after it gets to 100%, you will be able to open and view that video file. So you'll see it's now reached 100%. It's probably just finishing the very, very last thing it needs to do. And then we have our video file here. So if I click on it, we'll see if we can open this up. So if I just minimize this just a little bit, I drag it across and you'll see we have the video which is basically six seconds in length, it's square, and it's now suitable for putting onto um, Instagram or social media. So the um, trim video tool, really nice, quick and easy way to trim your videos. Another option I like is the resize video tool. So this works quite similarly to the resize image tool. You basically just drop your video file in, and then you have a wide range of options here to change the size of your video. You'll notice so you also have trim and chop tool, so you can trim it and resize your video. But it doesn't allow you to enter the start time and end time like we did a second ago, so you have to be a wee bit more accurate here. But I could maybe start at, uh, let's say, around about here. Now it doesn't tell you what the start time is in this case, so I don't actually know how many minutes into my video I am here, or how many seconds, but I could do a quick trim and chop, just make it 10 seconds in length, like that, and then you choose where it's going. So if this is for a story this time, I could choose story, and then as before, you can drag it so you can pick in which bit of the um, video sequence you want to be visible, and you can scale it, so you'll see here we can scale it right out, or you could have your story zoomed right in. The quality there will be a little bit more pixelated, so um, obviously you've got to, to factor that in. And then you'll see in resize, you can resize for anything. So you could resize even for, for LinkedIn. So there's like a, a LinkedIn option there. So loads of different options. They work in the same way. You click download and you get your finished video file. Okay, let's have a look at uh, one or two more. Merge videos in here. This is very useful as well. Again, if you're not used to using a video editing tool and you're just looking for a quick and easy way to pull together two or three videos that you can then perhaps take into the design tool and pop some, uh, I don't know, some text on or whatnot, or into the video tool. What you can do is click on Merge Videos, and then it just allows you to pull together your videos. So I've got um, three different videos here. I've got one of some um, Grand Central Station, I've got some ice skating, and I've got a subway clip. So I'm gonna select all three clips on my other screen and drag them across. Alternatively, I could just go to browse and then I can find the video file, which is going to be this one here. There's the three clips and I can just click open and you'll see it's going to bring them in. What I like about this is like most of the, the Adobe and Creative Cloud Express tools is it's just super easy to use. So first of all, you've got your little thumbnails down here for your videos. If you wanted to change the order, so you've brought them in in this order, but if you wanted to change it, you just click and drag these to rearrange them. So we now have basically reversed the sequences there. You can click on the first one and click play, and it shows you with these little markers here when it gets to the next video. 
So this sequence is one minute and 15 seconds long. Once we get to around about maybe 15 seconds, it will change to the next video. And you'll see this one actually has um, audio. So I'm gonna pause this one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back to the first one. And to make some quick edits to it, you just click on the pair of scissors, which is the edit tool. And then you can just drop the length. So let's say for example, we want this one to be eight seconds long. But instead of starting at eight second, uh, zero and ending at eight, what I could do is I could change this to start at um, three seconds and end at 11. Then all I do is click trim. And then I might want to um, go to the next video sequence. Now this one, if I click on the um, edit option, this is 15 seconds long. So let's just drop this down to seven seconds. So 07. Okay, seven seconds, click trim. But this one had audio, so I'm gonna use this option which mutes the audio. So that will turn the sound off and then you'll see we now have the subway sequence without the sound, which is cool. And then I'll go to my last one here. Now this clip is quite long. If I go into edit, this is 46 seconds long. So I'm just gonna drop that right down to six seconds and then click trim. The final thing you want to do is you want to decide where this is going. So it's actually got the trim tool and it has the merge tool and it has the resize tool all in one. So you can do landscape, you can do portrait, or you can do square. So you don't get the full list of options, but you get enough here. I'll do this one as square, and then I'll click on the download button. Now, just something to note here, you'll see that although we've chosen square, we've got these bars. So whilst you can resize, you might be better leaving it as landscape, downloading it, and then taking it into the resize video tool and resizing it in there where it allows you to zoom in and um, choose a wider range of resize options. But anyway, I'll click download just now. This one will process like it did before. Once it gets to 100%, the video will be ready for us to view. Okay, so that's a video now at 100%. You'll see it started to download. You have the option to go in here and make some changes, but we're going to just basically open it straight up. So open the video file. Um, I'll reduce the size of this just a little bit. And then you'll see if I click play, this is our edited video. So we've got the sequence there of the people at the um, ice skating area. It's then going to transfer into the subway sequence. And then once the subway sequence has finished, it's going to move into central station, which we have there. So it took me no time at all there to reorder my clips to perform basic um, trim and chop and to bring it um, into a finished file without the audio, which we muted as well. Final tool I want to show you in here that I like is if we go along to the end, you've got reverse video. So if I go into reverse video, same as before, you just drag one of your files in. So I've got a video here again of the subway. This is a good one to show because obviously the train is going to go in the other way. So it's uploading my video just now. Once it's finished uploading, you'll see there's a range of different options to allow us to reverse our videos. And this is something you see quite often on the likes of um, Instagram is that videos are often reversed or it's people, you know, they've fallen back onto a bed and then they're getting back up and whatnot. So there, you can really get quite creative with your content using some of these tools. Now you'll see the processing time here. It does take a little bit longer. This is a relatively short sequence and it has taken a little while to upload that. It doesn't always seem to take that long, so it could be related to my internet connection at that moment in time. But you'll see it has now brought the video file in. So it brings it in and it's at normal speed. So if I press play, this is basically normal speed, but the sequence has been reversed. What you can do is you can change it to a bit of a slower sequence or super slow and you'll see it's now 25%, or of course you can change the speed here so we can make it look like it's going in reverse, but very, very fast. So that's basically twice as fast. Final thing to show you is that it automatically mutes your video sequence because the audio is going to be speeded up or slowed down relative to the video speed. So you might want to leave that one as muted, but if you really didn't want to, you can turn that off. And then when you're finished, all you do is click download. And then once again, it will process your video. Once it gets to 100%, you'll have a finished video, which is now in reverse. Okay, so this video has now been finished. I'm gonna open it up just like before. 
So just minimize this view and then you will see with our video, if I click play, it has played it in reverse. So it's exactly what we're looking for. Now, of course, with that reverse tool, you were able to trim and chop the um, you know, start and the end of the sequence. But in this case, I think it actually works quite well. So I'm quite happy with that. So there you have it. Hopefully you found that video interesting. If you did, please do consider giving a like and feel free to subscribe to my channel. You can hit the subscribe button and remember to check the notification bell so you're notified about any new videos like this one. I've got plenty more to come for Adobe Creative Cloud Express, but as I said at the beginning, if you just want to find out more about the tool and what it does, then please click on the link in the description or on the card just above just now. But hopefully this was useful and thanks again for watching.